Welcome to your daily dose of inspirational and life-changing Bible studies designed to equip you to conquer your world. We encourage you to share this devotion with your family and friends, even start a watch party. We know that you will be blessed and edified. Today's daily devotion starts now. Well, good morning. It's another Monday morning. I love Monday mornings. We take charge of the week. It's the first day. I know sometimes people think, oh boy, I got to get back to work. We got to get back with the kids and the kids in school. Well, let's think differently about more Monday morning. First things. First things is a powerful. When you, when you take control of a first thing, you make sure a first thing is in place. First thing priority. It's really powerful for your life because it gets everything else in order. It's like when you, when you make sure God is in his rightful place, he puts everything else in order. But if you get God out of order, everything else is not in place. So Monday mornings, we put Monday mornings as a priority. We get up with God. We go with God for the rest of the week. And I want to continue from last week, really talking to you about how to get your tent in peace. Can I tell you right now, all around the world, there's war. Not just what is happening with Palestine and Israel, but there are war in schools, high schools, among students. There's war happening in politics, you know, with people fighting for power and fighting for positions. There's war within the financial sector with people trying to cause other companies to, to, to fall and to be out of the marketplace. There are war even amongst religions within, you know, leadership and within denominations. And there's war even within men. The Bible says every day, the spirit warreth against the flesh and the flesh warreth against the spirit. And so I want to let you know this message of peace is very relevant today. How do you live in a household with peace? We started in Exodus 18 last week, where I established with you, firstly, you know, things grow, uh, especially when it comes to people through the evaluation of others. Somebody who is ahead of you, somebody who is grown beyond you, somebody who has the maturity, they have the understanding, they have the wisdom to look at what you're doing. In John 15, God says, I am the vine dresser. Jesus is, uh, you know, the, the vine, we are the branches, but in him overlooking the fruitfulness of the branches, if a branch is not fruitful, he cuts it off. That's an evaluation. That's what we call stewardship. If the vine is fruitful, it is pruned so that it will bear what? More fruit and pruned again. So it will bear what? Much fruit. This is the role that Jethro was playing in his son-in-law's life, Moses. I'm watching what you're doing and what you're doing is not good. So the first thing we said is, do you have a person in your life that you respect and honor enough that is saying to you, what you're doing is well, but these are some of the areas you need to improve. Secondly, he would have given him some instructions. A lot of times, if you want to improve something in your life, think about the instructions of the word. Did you hear it and understand it? And if you did, are you practicing what you heard and understand? Knowledge, understanding, wisdom. Knowledge is, I acquire the truth. Understanding, I assimilated the truth. Wisdom, I activated the truth. I've put it into practice. I'm executing on what I heard and I understood from the truth. I'm now putting it into practice. So Jethro says, listen, I'm watching what you're doing. Your heart is in the right place, but your method is off. And we talked about the pull of tradition to keep us in the past. Messages must remain the same, but methods must change to become relevant. It was Eric Hoffa that said, in times of change, the learners inherit the earth. While the learned is beautifully prepared for a world that no longer exists. So we're going to jump back into the scripture here. When Moses' father-in-law Jethro asked him, verse number 14, Exodus 18, what are you trying to accomplish here? He says, if you continue to do this, where you alone are sitting from morning till evening like it's a one-man show. And by the way, let's take a note that ministry is not for lone rangers. Look at your neighbor and say, ministry is not for lone rangers. You say, well, look, I don't have a neighbor. Tell your dog, tell your cat, tell your iguana outside. Ministry is not for lone rangers. Ministry is based on teams. 
Even Jesus had a team. So who do you think you are? You can't do it by yourself. It's not your own opinion. It's not your own efforts, your own thoughts, your own perspective. Come on. You need the synergy of others. You got to be other minded, open to what other people think. That's how ministry is going to improve. So he says, listen, and I'm going to give you what? Counsel. So it's very important that you have sources in your life to give you good counsel. So verse 17, this is not good, Moses' father-in-law exclaimed. You're going to wear yourself out and the people too. This job is too heavy a burden for you to handle by yourself. Now listen to me and let me give you a word of advice and may God be with you. You should continue to be the people's representative before God. So now he has given him some instructions. The bridge between what he was doing wrong and what he's about to do better is the intervention of wise counsel. Let me say this to you. You are so close to doing better. It's not far off. You are so close to doing better. The bridge to moving from where you are to doing better is the bridge of wisdom that you must cross where you will hear wise instructions and follow them. That's all you got to do. Finances, health, marriage, parenting. What instruction do I need to hear? And what instruction do I need to follow? That's how close you are to doing better. It's not far off. You don't have to lose hope about doing better. You're, you're right there. What do I need to hear? And what do I need to follow for my tent to be in peace? So he's going to start breaking down the council of changing the method that he was doing. His method was many people to one leader. He says, that is gonna weary the leader and it's gonna weary the people. So here's the change in what you do. Everybody say change, change. If you want things to change, you must change. Some people want things to change, but they're only pointing fingers at everybody else and saying, you change this, you change that, you change this, you change that, but they themselves don't want to change. I don't know who said it, but he says, don't ask what my country can do for me, but ask what can I do for my country. That means change begins with me. So he said, you continue to be the people's representative before God, bringing their disputes to him. Now watch this. Before, he had the people bringing their disputes to him as a leader. Now God is saying, bring the people's disputes to him as God. That means he's saying the way you're spending your time as a leader is ineffective. Do you know that 80% of your results are coming from 20% of your activities? 80% of your results is coming from 20% of your activities. Ask yourself right now, what are the 20% activities that really bring 80% of my results? And you should put 80% of your focus on those type of activities. So what he's saying is, when it comes to your leadership, you should be focusing on spending more time with God than you're spending with the people. You will be more effective in your time with the people if that is preceded by you spending more time with God. I want you in my face. Why? Because I have the answer that you need to lead these people. You're spending morning till evening with the people but you're probably spending a little chips, a little appetizer with me. Hear this, spend more time with me and I will give you the answer. I'll give you the revelation. I'll give you the wisdom so that when you spend the little chips with people, you can get their problem solved in a short space of time. God is saying, I am the answer. You're not the answer. Leader, let me remind you this. It's God's people and God has the answers for his people. You're just a servant. You're just a vessel. And he's saying, you shift your time. Let me ask you this. How much time do you really dedicate to spending with God? Can I tell you this? The answers are in him. 
I know you're working hard on the business. I know you're working hard on your studies. I know you're working hard on your sports. I know you're working hard in, your, in the gym and your nutrition and your health. I know you're working hard on your new business idea. I know you're working. But how much time do you dedicate to being in God's face? Because God is reminding you this morning. You want your tent to be in peace? You want to lead people to tent in peace? Show people how to spend time with me. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Your burden, come to me and I will give you rest. Folks, can I tell you something? Let's bring the focus back to spending time with God. If you want your house in peace, if you want to be a leader who is leading in peace, leading others to being in lives with peace, tell people the answer is not in me. The answer is in God. Let's shift the focus. Don't put the spotlight on yourself. You're going to weary yourself in ministry. Put the spotlight on who? Put the spotlight on Jesus Christ. So the first instruction to change is, don't you have the people strewing their burdens on your shoulder. You throw the people's burdens on my shoulder. I can, I can shoulder it. This is the second instruction. He said, teach them God's decrees and give them his, destruction, his instructions. Now watch this. What he is saying is the people have continued problems because they, have, they don't have continued principles. The reason they keep having problems is they don't know what to do. They're coming to you for answers. Why don't you teach them how to get the answers? You see, true empowerment is not you being dependent on a leader. True empowerment is you learning to be interdependent with leadership. What does that mean? Leaders have taught you the principles to empower you to live a principle-based life so you can have success and you can have peace in your household. Problems with the marriage, you come for counseling. You got to learn principles so when you go back home, you put the principles in practice so you have peace in your home. Same thing with parenting. Same thing with relationships. Same thing with finances. It's principles that we don't know. So what he's saying is responsible leadership teaches people principle. It's not counseling people all day. They're not going to change. Why? Problems going to occur again. Problems going to occur. And they don't know how to access the answers. They don't know how to get to the answers. They don't know how to get to the solution. So guess what? You got to teach them the decrees and the instructions. Let me ask you this. Where are you learning the instructions from God? You're on devotions this morning. I'm glad you're here. Consistently, every day. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I will not miss the mark. You're missing the mark because there's no word hidden in your heart. What does word represent? Truth. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. It's a light unto my path. So I don't stump my toe because I can see that there is something in the way and I walk around it. I don't miss the mark. I don't pay a big price because I can see where I'm going. The reason I'm seeing is the word, the truth is the light and it is showing up the path for me to walk in a path that is straight and have prosperity and success and peace. So, hey, I'm going to spend more time in the face of God, but also I need God's instructions. I need God's decrees for me to have peace in my household. Are you there? Let me give you one more before we wrap this thing up. So we're building line upon line. Principle. I need you to be here next week. I'm going to finish this thing and show you in two more weeks how to really have peace in your household. So he tells them, hey, you spend more time before me as a leader. Bring the people's cares and put it on my shoulder instead of the people bringing their cares, putting it on your shoulder. He says, teach them principles so they can walk in it because the reason they have reoccurring problems is that they don't know the principles. He says, show them how to conduct their lives. And I, I, gotta, I gotta wrap it up this morning because you gotta come back next week. Watch this. Leaders have to be good models, but I wanna tell you this. A, a lot of the quality of your life is based on who you're modeling. You want peace in your household? Let me say this. If you're a young couple, you should be modeling a wiser couple who's been married twice uh, the length of time as you. 
if you want to improve your finances, you should model somebody who God has blessed with the wisdom on how to steward finances and they're doing well. If you want to improve on your health, you should be modeling, meaning shadowing, doing like somebody who has results beyond you. I'll tell you this. The people that you're going to grow from are not the ones hanging around you. It's the ones that have gone beyond you. Who do I have in my life that I'm modeling that's leading me to an improved life? Because I can tell you, the ones who have peace in their household, those are the ones you should be modeling. Monkey see, monkey do. I'm shadowing them. That's why I always appreciate the example of my parents. Because nobody gave me a full manual on how to be married, how to stay happy, how to treat with your wife, how to serve your wife, how to raise children. Nobody gave me the full manual on how to do this thing called life and marriage and parenting and children. But a big part of my learning has been modeling the good examples in First Church of the Open Bible. I'm modeling, I'm seeing the Pastor Dougie and the Sister Myrna. I'm modeling, I'm seeing Pastor Cecil and my, my, my mom, God bless her soul. I'm modeling Reverend Keith when he was around and Auntie Camley. I'm modeling the couples that I see with peace in their household and long good marriages. Models, living around good models is a privilege. It's a blessing. It's an honor to see good examples. I'm going to leave you with this this morning. May the Lord continue to give us strength. May the Lord continue to give us courage. Lord, we want our homes and our tents to be in peace. We want principle-based living in our household. Lord, I pray that we will be taught the decrees and the principles of how to really honor you. I pray that we will have time dedicated to be in your face. Why? Because the answers are in you. I pray that our practice our lifestyle, our words, our thoughts, our intentions, our deeds will be modeled after those who walk in uprightness or righteousness. Your word says, no good thing shall he withhold from them that walk uprightly. I thank you, O God, Father, for your word. Help us to walk uprightly in our family life. Help us to walk uprightly as husbands and as wives, as parents together. Help us to walk uprightly as, oh God, sons and daughters, brothers and sisters. Help us to walk uprightly in our ministry, in our business, in our workplace. Help us to walk uprightly that no good thing shall be withhold from us. We desire that when we live in our tents, we shall be satisfied and in peace. Teach us. Teach us. There is a peace that can only come from you that passes all understanding. May it garrison around our heart and our mind in no other name. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, next week, I need you to show up. We're going to continue this study on how to have peace in our tents. God bless you. You took the form of man.